Number 36, what is the relationship between the intermolecular forces in a solid and its melting temperature? Okay, so talking about a solid and going to melt. So in this case, if we're talking about melting, that means that we are talking about starting off with a solid and we're going to a liquid because that's the process of melting, right? Melting is from solid to liquid, so melting. Okay, so what's the relationship between a substance's intermolecular forces and melting? Well, a good, a good example here would always be bringing it back to water, right? Now, water, depending on if it's a solid or a liquid or a gas, or we could just think about any, any substance, I will put it in these small little boxes here. So here's my solid box, here's my liquid box. And remember, a solid is always tightly packed circles or whatever shape you want to use. But the idea here is that the substances, they're all touching and they have no kinetic energy. They're very, very high intermolecular forces because intermolecular forces are the forces of substances being attracted to each other. So intermolecular forces are always forces between two or three of um, the substances, not just one substance. Now, as you're converting from a solid, which has very, very high intermolecular forces, to a liquid, there's a little bit of flow here, right? The, the molecules are starting to break up a little bit. Some of them are still together, but the idea here is that they're able to move around and because of that they have higher kinetic energy now just know that as you are going from a solid to a liquid you will always have higher kinetic energy and kinetic energy is always the energy of motion so if you have high kinetic energy your molecules are going to start to move so i can maybe show that by having you know one tick just showing hey these guys are you know moving but these are not moving and because they're moving right they're going to start decreasing in their intermolecular forces so this is just like the general idea between from solid to liquid always increasing motion increasing kinetic energy and you're going to be decreasing your intermolecular forces because the um, molecules are going to start trying to exist on their own, especially when they get to a gas. But now, the melting temperature in which a solid turns into a liquid, I mean, could be any value, right? It could be, if we're talking about Celsius, right, we could talk about it in terms of like negative 50 degrees Celsius, we could talk about it as negative 30 degrees Celsius, or zero degrees Celsius, or 10 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Celsius, right? Now, why are these melting temperatures the way that they are? Well, the idea here is that if you have a high melting temperature, so we'll start off with that. If you have a high melting temperature, do you think now, keep in mind that as you're getting, you know, higher in value, the temperature is rising. It's starting to become more hot, right? So more heat. Um, but if you have a higher melting temperature, do you think that you had a lot of intermolecular forces to overcome or a little? You had a lot. The, the reason being here is that if you're melting at like a really, really low temperature, there was no you know, or very little intermolecular forces to overcome to just scoop, turn that solid into a liquid. But as your melting temperature is increasing and increasing and increasing, it's harder and you need higher, hotter conditions to turn that solid into a liquid. The main culprit for uh, high melting temperatures is the intermolecular force hydrogen bonding. And liquid water has that. Intermolecular forces, the hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular force, and that's why water's melting is so high. I mean, zero degrees Celsius for melting is pretty high, which is roughly 32 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So as you're increasing your melting temperature, that just means that you had a lot of intermolecular forces to overcome. And the same thing happens for, uh, you know, uh, vaporization temperature, right? The boiling temperature. That if you have probably a high melting temperature, you're going to have a high boiling temperature because you just need so much more heat to overcome the, uh, the intermolecular forces. So this, since they're both going up and up, this would be a direct relationship. So you could have said it, you know, anyway, just had to be the same thing going on. So as your intermolecular forces increases in the substance, your melting temperature will increase. And there you go. Let's box this off. Okay. And maybe I'll put this in a different color. Beautiful. There we go. We're all done. I won't try to color that one in. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, let me know in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope you guys having a great day out there. Um, yeah, let's just keep working hard, always studying hard. And yeah, good luck on your tests and quizzes. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.